Hey guys, we're going to stay out here and do a quick little video over EHD. And I'm first going to talk about what it is. It is a virus that's transmitted from a bite of a midge fly. And basically what occurs is in a drought-like scenario, you've got low, low, low uh, water areas or muddy areas or a muddy bank uh, slope. And those midges will come in there and they will put their eggs out. And then once those uh, eggs are you know, in the development cycle, those flies will go out there and feed off animals' blood. So if you're in a high density area, you, know, you can see a tremendous um, you know, uh, death of your deer population because of this. And basically what ends up happening is, is you've got a lot of your deer that will congregate in that uh, water area just because they're thirsty, because of the drought-like uh, scenarios. And those midges will come in there and they will bite those deer. And then those deer within um, eight to 36 hours will expire. Um, it is a, a fatal disease, but it's not transmitted from one deer to another. You know, that's the only good thing I can come out of uh, with EHD. But what ends up happening with those deer is they develop a high fever, and that is the reason why you see a lot of those deer near or actually in the water when they die. And it's just like anything else, you know, for us is if we get a high fever, we get hot, our body gets hot, we're initially going to want to go towards water, and that's why you find a lot of your deer in there. Now, you know, again, uh, it, it typically only occurs in your drought seasons. And a lot of times it uh, occurs more often when you have smaller water holes that are dried up and it's a muddy area. And it's a perfect scenario where those flies can go in there, lay their eggs, and then, you know, basically a, a, um, attack your deer herd, um, you know, through a bite. And it's a very fast paced uh, situation, you know, especially at high density uh, deer population. And, you know, we've had. Uh, several occasions since we've lived over here in Missouri since 2009, uh, 2014 was a uh, probably the worst season that I've ever went through, you know, and, and got to see and hear a lot of different stories that year with, uh, you know, good friends of mine that were really uh, super excited about uh, getting into, um, you know, the deer hunting aspect of it, seeing the shooter bucks, you know, throughout the summer months. And then they start finding them near or in the water, and it's a it was a really bad deal, you know, extremely frustrating. But it was part of you know, um, you know, just part of life. And uh, although it it took a uh, several years to rebound that deer population, you know, it did. Uh, you're not going to have a drought like setting every single year, but what I did uh, personally um, that particular year. I did not harvest any of my bucks um, just because I was so concerned is if I doubled up on here and killed two of my target deer, then what do I have left? You know, the genetics are still going to be in the areas, but I have nothing to really look forward to. And, you know, so basically it skipped and it worked out very well, um, you know, for myself, you know, just again, a personal decision of mine. But if you do find yourself in that situation dealing with EHD, you know, definitely look at that and make the deci best decision, you know, you can come up with there. But the only thing that I can uh, come to find out and what we've uh, attempted to do is anytime that we do find a low area, whether it's a, you know, a, a water hole that we developed ourselves or just over time, you know, that ground shrunk down and it, and it has water standing most of the time. But if it's a drought season, it turns into a muddy you know, nesting area for those midge flies. What we've done is either brought in a bunch of dirt or we've used a small dozer and pushed that out and basically eliminated it into the flat ground. And that seems to work out or has worked out very well. So hopefully this helps you guys out understanding what EHD is, how deer get affected, you know, and how it progresses through your deer herd and high density areas along with what you can attempt to do 
to eliminate some of that threat. So I appreciate you guys liking the video. Hopefully you guys are getting out there in nature. And like always, best luck on your upcoming hunt.